All right, the holidays are coming. Now, if you're having a small socially distanced gathering, which is what's recommended, or maybe it's just your immediate family, a cheese board can certainly be a lot more than a snack. It could be your meal. Joining us now with some great options, registered dietitian Heidi Harkoff and the New Eng with the New England Dairy. Heidi, we miss you in studio. How are you? Oh, and you don't get to taste anything today, Scott. I get to keep it all to myself now after the segment. <laughs> Which is terrible, terrible news, Heidi. <laughs> How have you been? What was that? How have you been? I've been great. I've been great. You know, it's um, it's been an interesting time to explore new flavors in the kitchen. And, you know, just like Kara had said, uh, entertaining is going to be really different this year, isn't it? And... I just find that after several months of, of living a life the way we've been living it, I feel like I need to switch up a little bit of our routine at home because I miss getting together with people. And I think as we, you know, start to get into the cold weather, we'll see a little bit even less of that because we can't go outside and enjoy it. So I think here in our own house, my husband and I are going to spruce up our Friday and Saturday nights and just make it a little bit more festive and fun. And I want to show you an idea of how to do that with a cheese board. Yes, absolutely. Love cheese boards. Isn't it great? So some of us call them cheese boards, sometimes they're called cheese platters. So um, I just thought I'd mention that. And I wanted to share some ways to combine different kinds of cheeses and what would make a great cheese board. Of course, there's so many ways, there's so much adaptability to it. So what I have here is I have something that I would consider like a dinner cheese board. So on a Friday night at the end of a long week, when you just feel too worn out to, to make a full-fledged dinner, and you might not want to run out of the house to go pick up restaurant takeout, which is always a fun thing to do. Um, this is a quick and easy way to, to linger over the evening, um, perhaps over your favorite adult beverage, or, or not, and, and have a, believe it or not, a nutritious meal with all the food groups represented, and yet have it be fun. So when you're thinking about building a cheese board, you want to think about having different kinds of cheese textures, so something that's harder, something that's softer, like harder being one of the more aged cheeses, softer being like a, a brie, which I have here, or even a, a soft cheese like a Monterey Jack. And then adding those favorite components that you really enjoy. So what I have on this cheese board right here, which we're gonna um, have for dinner time, is some smoked um, salami or, or prosciutto. We've got some slices of cucumber, and of course, a really good grainy mustard, because I think that goes so well with cheeses. Um, mm. And the cheeses that I have here on my cheese board today, I have a, a pepper jack because I think it's fun to have a cheese with a bit of a flavor mm. profile to it. Um, and there's so many fun ones that are out there. I've got a brie and I have a Monterey Jack here. And in addition to my produce, I also have some nice crisp bread and some sliced baguette. So what I want to tell you is at work, it's a fun way to spruce up my work day. I, I work at home even before COVID. What I'm going to do for my lunch is I'm going to actually take a few pieces of this. And my lunch, believe it or not, is going to be a cheese board. Have you ever done that for your own lunch? I have done it as an appetizer for dinner, but never for lunch. Well, I love that you're saying it can be lunch. It can be dinner. In a little bit, you're going to show us how to be dessert. We don't have to think of it as just uh, something for a special occasion. No, and it makes a great dessert. So this might seem a little bit unusual for some Americans because we always think of desserts here in America as being really over the top sweet, um, sweet desserts. But in many parts of the world, desserts actually cheese. And so here I have my dessert cheese board. And I want to show you some things that would make a great profile on that. In here, I have ricotta cheese. Mm. Now, I mixed it with a little bit of honey. You can also try maple syrup to give it a real New England flair. And then just simply spreading that on, on some pita chips. And what's in here is pumpkin butter, which is great this time of year. You can, of course, use fig jam as well. But that sweet profile of that jam, along with like the ricotta cheese, is a wonderful way to celebrate cheese as dessert. Brie is also a really nice cheese to have as dessert and pairs very well with fruit. And can you see what I have on this board? Do you know what this is over here? No. It's chocolate. Dark oh, yes. chocolate. I was going to say, I know dark chocolate pairs really well with ricotta cheese. <laughs> it pairs well with ricotta cheese. It pairs well with a lot of the other soft cheeses. Um, you can have them separate, a bite of each, put it on top and bite with both at the same time. Um, Chocolate is great paired with cheese. And I think it would be so much fun on a weekend night to bring out like dark chocolate, milk chocolate, white chocolate, and different cheeses and get together with friends over Zoom and discuss which flavor profiles everyone thinks 
would make the best combination. So it's a fun way to get together with friends, even if you can't do it in person. Thank you, Heidi. Thank, Heidi, it was a pleasure to see you. If you want to find more out about where the great cheeses come from here in Connecticut and in our region, visit ctdairy.org. And you can also find out more about how to build a great cheese board on our blog at newenglanddairy.com. Okay, thank yes, you so much. We appreciate so it. Much. Have a great day. No cooking cheese and chocolate. I'm in.